success of any team, man, based on team play. Based, based on, on team, team play. play. On behalf of the entire Notre Dame family, I can't tell you how thrilled we are to be able to win the championship. Win the championship. Round to the 34, to the 35, cuts up field, just to the 40, 45, one man to beat, touchdown again, Jimmy Brown, touchdown again, Jimmy Brown. Big day is finally here, time to play football for the national championship, the, the national, national championship. championship. Lacey drives down, he goes in, touchdown Alabama, Crimson Tide in control, Crimson, Crimson Tide, Tide in control. control. A national championship for the Crimson Tide. An overwhelming victory in this BCS title game. An, an overwhelming, overwhelming victory, victory in this BCS, BCS title game. game. We do hear the echoes of the championship game. We didn't leave our mark on it like we wanted to. And I think that filled a lot of people. That's what drives us to work so much harder. Whenever you win 12 games in a row and you get that feeling of, of winning like that, and then you go into your last game and you lose it like that, there's a sense of purpose that you want to get back to that feeling. Evening, guys. Evening. Evening. All right, a couple of things. First the starting all, point is that everybody's in it for the same reasons. And they have to know that I'm here for them. So I think you have to start with everybody being on the same page, including the head coach. So that's where we started the 2013 football season. Me, honestly, I already knew he was committed to this place. Coach Kelly, he's a real guy. You know, he told me from day one he's here for us. He's here for this university and he stayed. And I'm all good with it. I think that that's what allows you to develop over that period of time, the trust uh, in each other, so you can have a successful football season. Okay. All right, guys, thanks for your time. I appreciate it. Have a good night. None of us were happy after the game, and we wanted to get back in here and start working and you know, work towards our goal for next season, because we know what it takes to get there, and now we got to take it to the next step of winning that game. Hey, we begin the day to define who we are. Now, if it means that we're a group that doesn't say a word, but works our ass off every day and just comes to work, that's fine. We don't have to be something we're not. So don't misunderstand what I'm saying as I related to you last night, who are we? But we have to define who we are. We have to get leadership to take hold, and guys have to step up, and our personality has to come out, and that starts today. The biggest challenge for us will be cultivating that leadership. Because every year, your leadership group leaves you. All they leave is expectations. So now, they have to figure out how to live up to those expectations. Our season's always been tough, but definitely coming back after, you know, we got a week off after the national championship game, and winter workouts were as, as tough as they've ever been. I think that, you know, we first came in and we attacked the workouts, you know, as seriously as possible together. We come together in the winter, you know, we work hard with one another, we kind of grind through it together, we learn our roles, we push through things together and that's kind of where you know the building blocks for the season start. This isn't just add water. You know what I mean? This group is not just add water. Last year, it was just add water, stir, get out of the way, and we're good to go. There's a collection of very fine athletes. 
but this one's going to be a little bit more complicated. It's going to be add a little, take a little out, you know, and, and that's going to require a lot of my attention to all of those things. Tomorrow's going to be in the weight room. The road to a championship, something's got to give. you got to give something up. You want to get back there, you got to give something up. We're going to give it up right now. All right, let's go over a couple things here. Let's get locked in. When we say, okay, lock in, that's it. You know, we're on the clock. I guess Coach Longo's biggest thing is he challenged us. He challenged us to be better than we've already been. Yeah, they got challenged. I mean, it was back to work, but back to work at a different level. Getting up here and lifting weights early in the morning, that's not sacrifice, that's just who we are. As the strength coach, I'm the first one that's basically in the trenches with the guys and the first one to get a real look at just where the team is at both individually and as a team. Today, whip snatch, six by two, hit the Kang squat, hit the curl, the press. You know what to do, right? All right, let's go. The first day they got to me, you know, not a lot of, uh, you know, well, this year we're gonna, this year, you know, that type of thing. We just really went back to work. If you're not getting better every day, I'm gonna let you know, right? I think you, I think you know that by now, don't you? Paul Long was one of our directors and he has a leadership role in helping the day-to-day -day operation of our football program. All of our directors have that impact on a day-to-day -day basis of making sure that this blue chip stock continues um, uh, to move in the right direction. And those directors are crucial to that success. This spring will be different for you, You're, you know what I mean? I know what I'm doing. You're a veteran. Coach Longo is very, very, very instrumental in the development of everybody. He really pushes us when the coaches aren't around and, uh, you know, bring, brings the best out of you. I think that Coach Longo does a great job of, you know, just monitoring everybody's status individually. That is something that goes to believability. In other words, each player knows that he's not painting with a broad brush, that each card represents them individually and the amount of time he spends on your card, you know that you've got a personal connection with him because he's spending time. I know that sounds silly, and it's, some people say, well, that's old school, and we use computers. That's fine. You can get to that information, but just the way he does it when he's, he's tweaking your card and looking at it and making adjustments, you pick up that card and you know he looked at it, and, and that, that means a lot. Steven. 465. That, will that work? Yeah. You I feel mean, good? And I think that goes back to they see that you care about them individually. And when they get that sense that you care about them, then they care about you, they care about each other. And when your team starts to I didn't say they love you, because love's not part of this. It's caring about them. No frills tomorrow? Straight okay. Straightforward. There's two things that are going on here. One, we're trying to develop leadership within the ranks. Morning, guys. Morning. Morning. That's pretty clear. We've created that through player development, building trust, building confidence, that you can go out there and lead. Okay, then you gotta play the game on Saturdays. You can be the greatest kid in the world. You, you, you can be hitting all the notes the right way, but on Saturday you can't play the game the right way. And so we're integrating that into this process. Today's game day, okay? Today is game day. So Camp Kelly, the objective today is we're playing a game. Spring ball is going to create some models. You got the leadership end down, you're moving in the right direction, you got to go play now. And so that will come in time. We're not there yet. But that is definitely the next stage as we move through this off season to find out who we are before we come into camp. Let's go play. This is what builds it right here, guys. This is what builds it. This is what gives you the confidence. When you're stretching and the other team's over there hooting and hollering and talking, you're going, bring it on. These are the days that build that confidence that when they're talking, you're like, let's go play. Tommy Reese, break this. <laughs>
by far the toughest offseason we've had. We were pushed through winter conditioning and the winter workouts on the field that nothing like we've ever done before. Now finish. Good job. Good job. <laughs> Camp Kelly's creation is not to scare the heck out of you. Those that are scared are not ready to leave. So it makes it easy because those that are ready to leave, they show themselves. Determination, man. Determination. That's one of the key aspects of this team is you can tell that we want it. We're going to take on anything that you give us, but we're going to show you that we want it. Knowing that it's the last Camp Kelly, you want to make that last, you know, that last workout the best one. And we did that. You got to beat now. At the end of the day, I think it brings the team together. We're all struggling. There. There's no one who can make it through Camp Kelly um, not breathing hard. So, you know, you got to pick your teammate up. If he's struggling, you know, come on, man, let's go. You can finish this last rep. Codes, let's go! Lewis was struggling more so than others in the drill. We can do this, Daddy. And everyone else had finished, and so everybody collectively came to rally around Lewis to encourage him to get through it. I think that shows the strength of the team is if somebody's struggling, that it's not one person runs over and says, oh, come on, everybody, let's help Lewis. It's like everybody's on the same page. That drill was not meant for Lewis. He probably didn't like it too much, but we didn't see it as that. We saw it as, you know, everybody, you know, trying to cheer on a teammate to finish. I don't like to be that guy to show that I'm struggling. I like to be that guy to know I can do something, I can do it well, and no one has to worry about, hey, Lewis, he can't really do it. I'm not the guy. I don't like being in that situation. For us to do that together, I think, in the end, I think he really appreciated it. Definitely, I know my teammates love me. I, I've gotten to fights with my teammates, and at the end of the day, the next day, we always talk to each other, we always text each other, you know? I know my teammates love me. He's such a great player, and, and to know that he has the whole team behind him, and, and for any guy, really, if, you know, that, we would've done that for anyone. And um, I just think it, it speaks volumes to where we've come as a program and the relationships that we've formed here. Hey, listen, listen, we're not coaching effort. That's a great thing. Number two, we got guys that are willing to do it every single time. Now we've got to have, and, and this is where those guys know who they are. This isn't your team yet, seniors. You want it to be your team, then you got to take it over. I don't give the team to you, okay, until you're ready to take it. You're not ready to take it yet. You want that. You want it to be your team. You want to leave your mark on the program. And, you know, you want to have that control. You want to have... Um, the ability to, you know, push this in the direction that we want. Well, I think everybody assumes that when they're a senior, now it's de facto, it's our team. I turn the team over to you when you show me you're ready to lead. We're working towards that. We're not there yet. That's the challenge when we get back here. Good job today. Good work. We can leave here knowing we've accomplished something today. Let's get a break. Walking off the field, I think that what we accomplished as a team was a bond, a bigger bond than maybe what we had before then. We got something real good going on. on break. On break. Through the winter, the team accomplished an identity, which is what Coach Kelly told us we needed to find. And so when, when the sun came out on the last day after Camp Kelly, I don't know if it was a sign, but it was encouraging to leave on that note of just, okay, the team is taking shape. Did you get a good night's sleep? Rob Hunt, our uh, athletic trainer for football, tremendous addition. Probably the biggest thing that helps Rob and, and makes Rob and his group successful is, is Rob's relationship with the players. You'll still be able to run, still be able to move. Today is the start of spring practice. 
Our day started this morning when we opened at 5.30. Um, ironically, my day started this morning at about 4 o'clock when I got a message from one of our freshmen that was sick. Hello. Like, I don't want you over here in the building, so you just stay right there. All right, get well. Elmer's sick. When a guy's sick, we truly understand and believe and are aware that they want to be out there. Oh, I did want to be out there. It was, <laughs> waited for it for so long, and it was, you know, the big day, you know, train all winter, and getting out there for the first day of spring ball was huge, and <laughs> to wake up sick early in the morning, 4.30, yeah, that was uh, not the best, so. The hard part for him, he's an early enrollee. He's eager and hungry to please his coaches, his teammates, and prove himself, but at the end of the day, He's going to be a lot better Friday if he just takes care of himself today and allows us to, you know, do our part to make him feel better. It's the first day. Amir, a year ago, fractured his ankle about two weeks before we got started. And you end up, you see in these kids the amount of drama and or circumstances that they overcome. Uh, Amir had a complicated recovery. Um, there was setbacks. There was significant challenges for him. It definitely takes patience, you know, it takes faith, and it takes, you know, a lot of hard work and perseverance. But, you know, at the end of the day, the result of getting back out there is just so much sweeter after going through such a, you know, sour, you know, experience. Today, it's fun. It's fun to see him excited about playing football again. Walking out for the first day of spring practice, you know, it's kind of a new beginning for me starting here. You know, I just had a, a lot of excitement, a little anxiety, but you know, it's just great to be out there finally with my team and finally to be out there and, and play. Ready to go? How you feel? Yeah, it was awesome. He couldn't, I couldn't tell him enough how happy I was for him to get him back out there. And then he's smiling again and he's happy again. And you just see the relief and the excitement that, hey, this is what I love to do and now I get to do what I love again. Running backs, quarterbacks, stay in here, we're run tracks. I need the C's, I need uh, Amir. Go! Good, 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 Amir. A year ago, he just got here. He didn't have a chance to prove he could play at all. He had done so many good things that you've proven yourself, you know, to be part of the mix. Good job, Amir's fast. Hey, great job being fast. That's a coaching point, right? Good job being fast. It was fun just to go back out there and to be able to move how I used to move. It just, you know, it was exciting. And, you know, I just can't wait for, you know, the 2013 season. Have you watched Amir? He's close. The real art of this is the ability for your head strength coach and your athletic trainer to work in unison. Because for many, many years, those two groups have been separated by a buffer. That model existed for many, many years, and it's a broken model. It is an old model. You really have to come together um, with your trainer and it just, you know, we've got a great working relationship with that and uh, I got full trust in him and I, I really believe he's got full trust in me. Paul and I work together every day in concert with one another to best serve our players. It's important that those two positions work in unison. And when you have it humming, they complement each other. That weight you got put on him between probably October 15th to January 1. It doesn't look like a little boy. No. And so Rob's personality and Paul's, although very different, the way they go to work is to complement each other. Get off your feet. Let's have a good day tomorrow, OK? Sir. Sure. Catch him at good job today. Go. Hey, be ready, hey, be ready tomorrow. Full pads. Let's go. Count on me on two, one, two. Count, Count on me. me. After practice, I came into the training room, and he just said, you know, great job. Uh, you know, you're back. Amir, great job. I really appreciate, I appreciate all your help too, Rob. How'd you feel? Felt good. It just summed up the entire experience, the entire journey that I went through. To be able to say, you know, you're back and that I can move how I used to be able to move was, you know, just a blessing. I really thank God and you know, I thank Rob and you know, everyone who supported me because it really was a, you know, a long journey. But that was huge. That was fun to watch. <laughs> be proud. You pushed me the other day. What? You pushed me the other day. <laughs> huh? I don't remember. <laughs>
Well, it's definitely the relationship that drives the growth. Developing relationships with the old linemen was probably one of the toughest things for me. Go! Oh, outside, baby. I'll fall. I'll fall. Definitely showing that I had command of the offense has helped me develop a, more of a relationship with those guys um, and help us to you know build that bond not only on the field but off the field. So you know you got to put on time. Excellent, 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 excellent. Year one, I've already kind of been through that, so I know now what to do and just trying to take that next step and be a leader. Go! We didn't get the facts. You know, it was obvious to me, you know, that you know there was something going wrong. With the X A. X, 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 X. We need receivers! X, X, X. We weren't being as efficient as we, as we should be, uh, so I felt the need to step up um, and, you know, say something about it. Hey, that's when we gotta step up. Let's go now. Let's go. Everybody gotta step up. He's taking these opportunities to, to try to make it his offense and take ownership, and those are the little things that he's doing that it's obvious to everyone involved, including himself. He knows that was a time that I have to take control of the offense and try to help steer the ship in the right direction. Coach, we're done. Get a break! Ran right by the four. Hey, oh, we gotta be better, man. We gotta be better in this next pick. Hey, here we go, here we go. Count on me on two. One, two. I'm gonna look at creating opportunities during practice, during competition, for those guys that we've identified as our leadership group to take hold and to take the team over. Let's go, three on three. Hey. We in there! Let's go! Oh. Are we about to get this? And we still in there. Hey, we got a score right here. We got a score right here, baby. Let's go. We always say, like, the offense will believe whatever you believe. In that situation, it's fourth down, and we have one play left, and he's saying, come on, we're going to do it, and we're going to do it right now. We got a score right here. Let's go. Net up. Net up, baby. Ready. Say it. Get in there. Get in there. I see you, John. He's instilling belief in the whole organization that's going to happen. That's what you need from your leadership. Last period of practice. I broke through the hole, broke a tackle, I was, you know, pushing for the end zone, and I, the safety kind of jumped on my back, and I turned and fell right on my shoulder. I just got tackled and driven to the ground, landed on the shoulder. I felt it, but you know, I just had to finish it out. He felt it, he didn't think it was something significant at that point. I'm a guy who I'm never going to quit. I'm not going to quit on any play, on anything I do in life. Get a break. Get a break. Here we go, here we go. They count on me on two, one, two. At that point, the pain set in and kind of just approached me saying, hey, something's not right. So I reach up under his pads and it's pretty easy to feel right out the gate. I think you've injured your clavicle. I think you've fractured it. And uh, we need to take an x-ray. Walking off the field, I knew my, my shoulder was hurt. There's the end of your bone. And here's the other end. It's frustrating. I mean, it's really frustrating. You can see the frustration from a mirror. So you're just doing the best that you can to kind of console and look forward and not look back. I don't know why it happened. I can't tell you why it happened, but it did happen, and it's gonna make me a better person. It's gonna make me a better player in the end. Let's uh, let's get a hold of your dad and mom. After that, I called my parents, um, told my dad what happened. He shared the same frustration as me because 
you know, they, they've been through this whole entire journey with me. Um, they felt the ups and downs and, you know, this is just another, you know, another obstacle. It's a, a valley, but, you know, uh, like my dad said, there can't be peaks without valleys. So this is just another, you know, experience that's going to help build my character. So over here, yeah, lay down. After um, Robert just told me, uh, you, you know, you broke your clavicle and uh, ever came over to me and said, you know, just keep your head up, keep your head up, everything's going to be all right. And, you know, that really meant a lot to me. I care about him, man. Um, you know, I did what you know, I thought was right. Me going down to see him was a little bit different for me. I couldn't honestly say uh, when I first got in here, I would go and see about players. But it's just growing with these guys and those guys seeing me develop and, you know, me seeing those guys develop. You get a compassion for one another. Um, and, you know, that, that's like your brother now. So, and, and that's how all of us feel about each other. Keaton, watch that. Yep. He's either got to go here. If he goes here, we're going to throw the ball, hopefully, for a home run to Amir Carlo. Well, you were up in the meeting room. I was with Amir looking at his x-ray. It's important to be there at the right time. And it wasn't for me to diagnose or anything. It was that I was there to validate that everything that he did, I saw it. Tell him here, tell him here to come upstairs. Yeah, yeah, tell him definitely come upstairs. upstairs. And if not, if he's not going to call us, we'll come down. To see the coaches believe in me as, as a player and care for me as a person, I feel as though it, it gives me a, a sense of responsibility to play my heart out for them and play my heart out for these, these guys in this locker room you know, who believe in me and who support me. Then I went upstairs to the offensive staff meeting room. Sit down. Sit down. It's a family that we've built here, you know, a real close-knit team and, you know, our coaching staff is real close-knit and, you know, I believe that type of care and that type of unity between coach and player defines this Notre Dame football team and is why I feel as though that, you know, we've experienced success in the past and I think why we'll continue to experience success because if everybody's on the same page and if everyone, you know, cares for each other, then it becomes important. If you really care, you're going to do what's best for the team and you know, that care, I feel as though, you know, really defines us. Pro day, you know, it's a huge day for me. It's a huge day for all the other guys going in and participating. You know, it's a time for us to show the scouts what we can do and how hard we've been training. It was a job interview, a really important one. It's an exciting time, but, you know, a little nerve wracking, but we're ready for it going through the last four or five years. If you're not ready by now, you're never going to be ready. When you come to Notre Dame, you want to expect success. You don't want to expect anything less. And I think that Notre Dame's done a great job of building that into me and into who, a part of who I am. As soon as you're done with the 20 shuttle, go right over to the three cones right on the other side. Okay. Now for my part, come on in here guys. I think today was having that group of guys with us three years, understanding, you know, player development. I think that that was probably the feeling that Coach Longo in particular had with those guys. Last time together, man. We got here as one. <clears throat> We're all going to push each other and go from there, all right? Yep. True. All right, Let's take a count Let's on go. me. Come Last on. time, y'all. Count on me on two. One, two, count on me. Being at Notre Dame, you know, we're always in the spotlight. We're going to have a bunch of scouts, GMs, head coaches there, and it is nerve-wracking, but at the same time, this is what we've done our whole lives, and, you know, we've been training for this moment, and, you know, we're ready for it. People ask me, you know, if I'm ready for the, the big time or the big stage. Cut. Being here, you're always on the big stage. There you go. Good. That really gets you ready for those make-or-break moments that you got to be at your best because you only got one shot. very pleased with the way I performed and you know, very pleased with how we all perform you know, as a whole. I think we all out there represented uh, Notre Dame the way it should. You know, I'm at home now. I'm in a place where I'm comfortable. I'm surrounded by people that I know. I right here at Pro Day. We got a bunch of guys on the team that came and watched. We were with them for four years and you know we, we made a brotherhood with them. 
you know, we just came out to support them. 15. I think it shows how close of a team we've become, and you know, I think it means lots to them to have all of us come out here and support them, and you know, just show that we're behind them. Kind of gives you a whole different comfort level, where you know you have the confidence to go out there and just perform at your best. We've been through the ups and downs, and we still share this brotherhood with each other. We want to see our brothers succeed, so that's why we're out here. How you doing? All right. Great. Busy day. I think Brian and his staff are as good as any staff I've ever seen in college football as far as teaching. It's the ability to get a kid here, but then it's a, an ability to develop a kid, not just as a football player, but through work ethic, making sure he goes to class and becoming a well-rounded citizen, whether he ever plays in the NFL or not. Cool. Thank you. Thanks, brother. The ingredients to being a great football player have a lot of different elements. And it's the ones that we spend time on in player development. It's, it's leadership, it's character, it's their skill. More so than just one measurement of 40 dash or shuttle or vertical jump. So yeah, that is a piece, but if you're caught up on those, then you're just looking for a bunch of athletes and that's not how we work here. I wanna be right next to Ice. When we talk about the success that we've had, it takes everybody. Not only the 105 guys and the coaches, it takes an incredible support staff. And today, uh, we want to take an opportunity to thank all the work of our academic team. Uh, I want to start with our faculty rep, Trisha Balia. Trisha. Also, our academic support team, Colleen Inglesby, Adam Sargent. This is our way as a team to thank you for the work that you do. These three of them are addressed to you directly. It has your name on it, it's signed by the entire team. We've got a uh, Count On Me uh, slogan in there for you as well. Thank you So again, thank you for all your work. Adam Sargent is our, our academic advisor for the football team. Say, hey Jesse, next week George, who's in the philosophy of religion, is gonna work with his professor to get a topic settled for his big paper. Sarge and Colleen, they're one of the first people you meet when you step on campus. You're gonna pick them out, lay out your schedule, and then turn it into the dean's office. You go over to the academic office, you meet with them about your schedule, about the teachers, and if you have the time developing a relationship with Adams, it's in your best interest. What I do is have candid and honest discussion with each of the guys to address and assess how they're going about their studies. Where are we? How far are you on this paper? Are we going to have something for 7 o'clock? What their habits are, their decision making, their behavior, all of it as it relates to hopefully trying to get the most out of this experience. He's pretty much, I'd say, you know, the best at what he does. He's there for you to help you with classes. He's there for you to help you through setting tutors up, setting your schedule. I mean, without him, you know, these guys on the team, we'd be lost. Will, are you going to work with him at all? Or are you going to focus on math mostly? I was a former student athlete. I had a car accident in the summer of my junior year that resulted in paralysis. One thing that I had was a foundation, an educational foundation, as a result of the time that I spent three years prior to that accident in Notre Dame. I know how much different my life could have been without the Notre Dame family and the education that I received here. Because of that, I am very comfortable to have prolonged, ongoing discussions with our guys in a way that challenges them to get the most out of this, even when they don't want to hear it, especially when they don't want to hear it. Did you meet with her? Yeah. Individually? Yeah. In office hours? Yeah. Okay. The window that they have here is small, and the opportunity to get the most out of this is something that we have great urgency on. And we want to make sure that what they're doing tomorrow is a better approach than what they did today. At the end of the day, he's done so much to help us that I can never give back to him what he's you know, been able to do for us. You got uh, the floor. What do you want? <laughs> we love working with you guys. We want nothing but the best for you. And the reason we do this every day is because we care deeply about your education and who you are as people. So thank you guys. We spend an awful lot of time with you guys, especially when you first get here, and we love to watch you grow and develop um, and leave Notre Dame ready to contribute very positively and successfully in your communities. And we just enjoy the time and appreciate your efforts. So thank you. Thank you. You focus on your job and do your job. Is that clear? Yes, sir. 
Let's go play. We're tackling. Yeah. Let's yeah. take care of each other. Let's go. First day we're going to go live. We do a blitz period really for the first time this spring, and that's always going to be a little choppy. My fault, George. My bad. Go! He wouldn't have gotten me. A couple times he was kind of upset with the ref, like, that guy didn't tackle me. Like, are you kidding me? I need to play! I need to play! What's the play? But that was the drill. You're not live, they deem you are sacked. You're sacked, we move on. We gotta get over the ball, we gotta run our next play. We don't have time to put our head down and kind of be upset. We two times, we have penalties. So, you know what I mean? Just be aware, I'm putting the time up there for you, not for me. Yeah, I'm with you. You know what I mean? That's also part of the dynamic of leadership at the position, and we thought he did some good things. We thought well, he had a couple moments where he kind of took a step back. The cue's always gonna be on your body language mm. and how you look, mm. and once, you know, once that's good, mm. then you can start helping the other guys. Yeah, I want you. Okay? Each person is different, and they respond differently to words and teaching. Rough day, man. So it was a rough day. For Everett, it's best to get him when he's out of the fray, when he's away from the action. When I want to get away from football, I usually come to the band building and, you know, just play, find the piano and play. I just sit down and play, and it could be for, you know, an hour or two hours or, you know, even longer than that. I just kind of, you know, get lost in it a little bit. I've been playing piano five or six years. Music in general has always been in my family, and I, you know, picked up the piano and just loved it ever since. I use it as my outlet. It's always been there for me. I love music, so and that's what I do when I want to get away from football. The spiritual aspect of Notre Dame is huge. So are we ready? Not only on campus, but on the football team as well. I think we demonstrate that a lot as a team. You know, we have different fellowships. Thank you for allowing us the opportunity to come here today and worship you together as brothers. You know, we pray. Amen. Amen. I think that's honestly a huge part of why people choose to come here because the challenges they're going to face spiritually and the growth they will have while they're here. It's something that we deem very important. You know, that's what our job is as, as coaches, you know, that we try to develop them as men. You know, that's something that's very important. It's not just about football, it's about life. Ernest Jones has such a pure heart as it relates to his faith in God, his belief in, in football, and the lessons learned through the game that are going to help a young man become a man, and that's what drives him each day. Answer a question for me. Yes or committed? What's the difference, if, if there is a difference? We try to make sure, you know, as men, as coaches, that we at least tell them that, that we don't keep that from them, and we give them a choice to be able to live the type of life that they want to live and do it in a manner that they want to do it. We're not afraid to have any type of person on our team, atheist, agnostic. We're brothers here. We train together. We bleed together. We cry together. So, you know, that's not going to have any effect on how we play because we know what every guy is made up of. So how you find what's really real about yourself so that you may in turn work on yourself so that Jesus may see who really real instead of seeing who's on the outside. Amen. Anybody want to help that brother before I jump into this? It's non-denominational. You don't have to be Catholic. Faith will be restored when you come to Notre Dame. Faith in each other. Faith in your own beliefs. And that's spiritual development. We all fail. We're all imperfect. But it's about rising back up. I feel like that coincides with Notre Dame football. Oh, I'm pissed. Wow. Right after practice, I knew I had to get in the film room, mainly because I felt like I didn't have a good practice. I always learned that I had to work hard and, you know, I can't stay down too long. I checked that part. I'm sure just running too. I had to immediately get in there and try to correct my mistakes and really try to come back the next day um, with, a, with a better work ethic and, and uh, being more efficient on offense. Nice! Yes! Oh. Six in a row. Six in a row. Awesome job. Awesome job. We had more pressure today and he went out there to make sure that that period went better, which it did. Good, good, good. 
Good. There he is. There he is, wide open. Thank you. Good job. Good job. You've had 12 plays. You've had 11 right reads. He likes to clean up his mistakes. He doesn't want to be a guy that has an issue and then repeats that mistake. So he had a good day, and his leadership was good. Better, 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 better. He's such a passionate player when it comes to his craft. He's so focused on the now. Sometimes he can't take a step back and, and let that all seep in. So I try to take opportunities when he's a lot more comfortable and relaxed to try to make those bigger sweeping kinds of observations. And he takes them so much better in, in that light. The next thing for you is, hey, I'm in this formation, I like this. Yeah. You know, because you got so many things going on in your brain. Yeah. See you later. All right. Today we're going to fit the guys with their game helmets for the blue and gold game. One of the best things about my job is to see the reaction of the guys when they get their, their game helmet. Steve Elmer came in, we played a little joke on him. The freshmen don't get them. The five don't get them. Oh, okay. You guys got to earn your stripes. All right. We told him quickly, his reaction, his face lit up. This is crazy. Here I go. First time I ever put my game helmet on was Tuesday. All right. Love. This is huge. <laughs> this is this is the moment, you know. Put on the, the golden helmet. That's what you dream about for your whole life. Cheers, take it. This is awesome. Be able to be part of that process to give the kid that that feeling is is awesome. They're going to wear their game helmets for the spring game, and then again for the 2013 football season. It's the Notre Dame helmet. There's no comparison, and there's nothing like it. The spring game is about a lot of young players that are going to get a chance to dress in the locker room. Well, this is actually my first time back in the locker room since I became an actual player. So I've been in here as a recruit, but it's a little bit different now. It's a simple locker room, you know, the alumni that step through these doors and and talk to the people that wish they could, you know, it's an important part of Notre Dame. I came to love it and know it's just more than just a locker room. I'm about to go out on the field and, and play, you know, put on the gold helmet and the, the blue jersey and run out of the stadium. It's going to be an incredible experience. They're going to be able to touch the sign and feel the traditions of Notre Dame football. Going down the steps out into the tunnel, didn't want to play like a champion today, sign. Now I'm here and I'm part of this team and it's all about the team now and, and representing the team in this university and that's what it's going to be about when I'm out there on Saturday. What we've been able to do in a very short period of time is to get our guys focused on the process. The process is grinding through study table. The process is grinding through weight training. All for that opportunity to get a chance to play on Saturdays. Today, if you want to win, you better lead as well. You better lead as well. I'm starting a journey. All these guys, you know, Lewis is leaving after this year. You know, he's got a lifetime of memories that he's made, and it's kind of crazy to think about that I'm going to be doing the same thing here in a few short years. I'm really excited about getting started. Since, you know, my freshman year, those guys, you know, set the foundation for the guys like me that are now seniors. You know, they set the foundation, and Steven's one of those guys coming in just like me, and he wants to keep adding to it. You know, we went from 85 playing in the Sun Bowl to, you know, 12 and 0 playing in the national championship. And, you know, he wants to keep that going. There is no end. There is no end. There's no destination when it comes to developing young men. There's no destination when it comes to a football program. It's a constant journey. You're capable of doing great things. Let's do it together. 
Let's do it together. It's day after day. It's a process. And when you talk about process, process never ends. Instead of being distracted by the expectations and the gold helmets and all that goes with that, it's the process. And keeping our guys focused on the process has been the secret to our success.